Imperial Championship Series tonight. We have Imperial Titans going up against Imperial Black for our Sunday remake. Uh, we had a little bit of a miscommunication earlier on in the week and rescheduled for tonight. So getting into the first bands. Uh, I got also co-casting tonight with our League Commissioner, Swifter. Hello, guys. Wow, to get it started, uh, Bands, Trundle, Zed, Yasuo. The Yasuo, I mean, we kind of expected with KRP's champ pool, Yasuo is kind of one of the best, uh, one of his best champions. So that's kind of expected. Uh, but what do you think about the other side, blue side's band so far? So with the Trundle and Zed coming out, Trundle kind of being a staple so far in this patch, uh, being a real monster in either the top or in the support role, um, mostly coming out of support as we've seen lately. Not exactly in the champ pool of uh, we've seen so far out of Imperial Black, but anything can be pulled out with uh, these champions being more on the OP side. Yeah, then the Jax ban, that one's kind of confusing to me. I, you know, Georgie isn't really known for his Jax plays specifically. Uh, what the Jax ban really tells me is they don't really want to face a split push threat. They kind of want to go in uh, 5v5 against them because obviously Jax is known for his split pushing and not much else. Um, although also, by the way, um, Purple Team uh, Black loses a ban here, obviously for the miscommunication that happened early in the week, so that's why there wasn't a ban there. Also, we see the targeted Shaco ban coming out of Imperial Black, just really afraid of uh, Raz and Lee's Shaco coming out of the jungle. Kind of interesting. And the first pick, Mundo, coming on here, losing that ban is really hurting him, leaving that OP up. And with uh, Trundle already taken, I wonder if we can expect to see a Kindred uh, coming in here out of Black. Yeah, they really need something to shred through the Mundo. Mundo is a really tough opponent to face right now, especially in this patch. I mean, he did somewhat get nerfed um, in 6.1, but it wasn't enough to make him uh, not an OP champion. And that really sucks when you're on purple side and uh, or red side and you get to lose a ban because you really leave up that champion to blue side. But the Vayne is a really good pick, obviously, because Vayne's good at shredding those high, uh, high health targets. So we'll see how that one goes. Yeah, and picking the Vayne with the Lee Sin, they're probably going to look to either get Vayne ahead uh, with some snowballing because really Lee Sin putting forward the early game pressure and Vayne being a lot more of a late game champ, especially with a lot of these, uh, the OP80 carries nowadays with uh, Misfortune, Lucian, and Corky all excelling in the early to mid game. It's really going to be tough to get a Vayne ahead um, and transition into a late game here. And with especially with KRP locking in the Morgana, probably the Morgana support, uh, Vayne's going to have a really tough time here in bot lane. Yeah, that's a huge tank line also coming from uh, coming from the Titans. You've got Zack and Mundo, and they're both massive health stackers. I think a Kindred right here would have been perfect. Uh, unfortunately, obviously, they go with the Lee Sin. The Vayne is still good against the health stackers if she gets that Blade of the Ruin King. But uh, that's a huge front line so far. And then with the Morgana Black Shield, it just makes it so hard to stop these people because you can't even really kite them out because of the Black Shield. So it's going to be tough. Like, I think so far in this draft, uh, Titans really have the upper hand from what we've seen so far. Yeah, I can expect um, out of Imperial Black, they already have a lot of damage down. So they're going to be looking for something a lot more on the tanky side. And luckily, Giorgio plays a lot of tanks. We could see he is known as a signature Singed player. Um, against this team, there he goes, we have him hovering yeah, there it. it is. I, I could definitely see him locking that in. It wouldn't exactly be a terrible pick against this. Uh, could be some good peel to peel off something like a Mundo, um, or even peeling off Zack. So yeah. I, I can really see the Singe coming in handy, as, as well as putting out some of that, uh, his toxic damage throughout the team. So we'll see, yeah. and, and then the Bard for even more peel. So hopefully, this is this will turn out well for them, hopefully. I think something else that Singed adds is a lot of... Uh, that pressure around the map, that split push pressure especially, because uh, this team is looking like they want a 5v5. They want to just run at you, especially with the Morgana, the Zac, the Mundo. They want to just run at you. So being able to have the Singed, uh, especially because he's good at disengage and he's good at kind of creating that pressure around the map, it really creates that, that uh, presence around the map that Titans have to be aware of. And then obviously... Uh, Lazy Asian taking out the Bard that is his class because it's most played uh, and it's also a good champion for this pick as well because it is a champion that's good at disengaging, good at getting uh, away from people so uh, I think so far two really good picks in counteracting to uh, Titan's team
So, so far, a really, um, and with those last two pickups there on, on Imperial Titans, the uh, Lucian and Azir, like I said before, uh, really highlighting the 80 carry picks, Lucian is going to do really well into a vein early on in the game, um, as well as picking this Azir. Obviously, didn't have time to get the counter pick off, but it's kind of what they needed to round out the comp, because as you can see, they had the great front line, they have decent damage coming out, but they were lacking wave clear, and that Azir yeah. is really going to um, round out that pick for them. And on the wave clear note, Imperial Black is really missing out on that. And yeah. with an Ezreal in the mid lane, they're going to have a really tough time if uh, Imperial Titans ever get ahead. They're really playing on the defensive is not going to be a way that they can really come ahead in this game. Yeah, the Azir also adds the disengage that they really needed um, to get the Singed away from them. Uh, because they didn't have a ton of disengage. If they go with this Ezreal, it's going to be really, really risky. They just don't have the wave clear. I mean, the Ezreal brings a little bit of wave clear, but I don't think it's enough for a team that's really just going to run at you. I mean, Zack and Mundo are great champions for diving. And this, yeah, this is going to be hard. Just from the picks and bans themselves, I think Titans has won the pick and ban stage. What do you think? Well, Titans really just, especially with that Mundo pick, they just have an overall really solid team. Um, and even yeah. transitioning in the late game, uh, they're going to have a really tough time doing it. Um, so really what we have to look for out of Imperial Black is for them to come ahead in the early game. With an early game Ezreal, he has sort of like an opportunity to come ahead on Azir uh, if he can land his poke well and as well as dodge a lot of his damage. But yeah. really, like, our, our, all our eyes are going to be on the top lane here uh, with this Singe pickup. Because that's really where the solo Q star is going to be here on Imperial Black. And that's where they're going to have to start their lead. Yeah, I think if, if Black doesn't really take advantage of the, their early game pressure, they're really going to struggle in the late game. Because they don't have a great team fight. Uh, they really have to rely on that split push in the, in the wave management that the Ezreal gives. Um, and then obviously the singe, the pressure he gives. Yeah, because it, just looking at a 5v5 fight right now, uh, around objectives like Dragon, like Baron, it just really looks like Black's going to have quite the hard time uh, just kind of running into Titans. And uh, yeah, Titans are predicted to do pretty well in this game. Uh, they have a lot of really talented players. But one thing that we, did, we do notice is that Black is a team that's been around for quite a while. They've been uh, playing together for a lot longer than Titans has, so maybe that will factor in. Maybe they have a little bit of a better synergy. Uh, Titans is more of a newer team, so we'll see how much that has to play in it here. Yeah, and talking about that synergy, really something that's going to be really crucial in this game is uh, almost Smeagol and Lee Sin really getting into those early invades. Uh, Zach isn't exactly known for being a really strong early game jungler, and with Lee Sin that really being his, uh, his strong suit, if he's able to get in and with some really good early invades and translate that into kills or lost gold there on Imperial Titan side, he can then transition to that into some of his lanes and hopefully getting uh, Toru Kingu ahead. Yeah. What do you think about the mid matchup? Do you, how do you think uh, Ezreal is going to fare against Azir? So when Ezreal into Azir, uh, it's really sort of even. Uh, I could definitely see it going either way. Uh, both sides are going to have fairly decent amounts of damage they're going to be putting out with as, uh, with the CC being similar after uh, Veldor is able to pick up his Iceborne Gauntlet and of course the CC offered by uh, Azir's, uh, the soldiers coming out. Yeah. So really what we're going to be looking for is the early game trades that come off and that's going to be pretty much all a positional game. Uh, how well KRB can position within his minion wave, and how well Veldor can arcane shift out of those uh, soldiers being dashed in at him. Yeah, I know, another thing that I think uh, Black really has to focus on is getting that early dragon control. Uh, obviously, the Lee Sin, uh, the Ezreal, and the Vayne, that's a lot of really good pressure in the early game to get those early dragons. they got to rotate for those early dragons properly and get them down early because you just don't want to group up and fight for them late. You don't want to put yourself in a position where you're grouping up against an Azir, against a Zac, against a Morgana. That's a ton of damage. It's a ton of AoE. And then on top of that, you add in the Lucian uh, and the Mundo who just have a ton of damage as well. Really, Titans has got a well-rounded comp, and uh, I think the saving grace to them winning this game is going to be Georgie. I think he has to be able to create a lot of pressure. If Georgie creates enough pressure around the map, the Black or the Titans has to send somebody, one or two people to go answer him, it's going to give 
Black a chance to really win the game and snowball the game because skirmishing, I think Black has the has the lead three v three, four v four. But a five v five fight, as I said, I, I just don't see Black winning it. So they really have to use Georgia to create that pressure. Yeah, I would have definitely agree with that. Um... Looking at, like you said, the 3v3 and the 4v4 point, I definitely think what Imperial Black has got to do is they got to take advantage of some of the smaller, uh, the smaller choke points. Um, you know, the spots leading into Dragon, uh, going through River, and through the jungle is really going to be the spots where they excel at. That's going to where they're going to be able to get off those Lee Sin's Dragon Rage. It's going to be able to hit multiple targets. They're going to have that Bard Stun always coming out. Ezreal is always going to have a spot to hit his Qs on. And as long as they have Vayne in the appropriate position, they're really going to be able to have constant damage come out. And those front line with uh, Zac and probably Morgana moving more so into the front line, they're going to have a lot easier time picking down these targets uh, than they would in, let's say, open mid-fight. So yeah. really, we're going to have to look for the positioning and where they choose to pick their fights at. It's going to be really pivotal for them. Yeah, I think having proper warding for black is really going to matter. They're going to have to catch people out. Uh, if you catch a, a Nazir out on his own, if you catch even a Zack out on his own, as hard as Zack can be to kill, they have a lot of pick. They have the Bard ult, they have the Bard Q, they have the Vein, uh, they have a Lee Sin, they have a lot of pick potential. They have to look for the picks, they have to look for the positional mistakes. If Titans aren't playing as a team, if Titans aren't grouping up, um, if Titans are sloppy positioning around the map and they're not roaming properly, they're going to get picked off by Black, and they're going to get Black a pretty sizable lead uh, that Black can definitely snowball. But uh, I, I look to kind of stay together if I was Black. Move as, a, move as a unit, move as a team. Otherwise, I think, or oh, sorry, at Titans. Otherwise, Black's going to really pick you apart with that Leeson and Bard. Yeah, and uh, since we're getting into the game here, let's go ahead and introduce some of the players. On uh, Imperial Titan's side, we got Clannon on Mundo up at the top. Uh, Raz and Lee in jungle with Zach. Holy KRP. Is on Azir in the mid lane, uh, Detritus on AD Carry, Lucian, and Full Metal Echo around uh, out the team on Morgana support. And on the red side, on top lane, we have Sinji's uh, personal Singed, his favorite champion. In the jungle, we have almost Smeagol on Lee Sin. Uh, in mid lane, we have Velder on uh, Ezreal. AD Carry, we have Turo Kingu, Turo Kingu on, uh, on Vayne, and uh, Lazy Asian on Bard. That's gonna Which be a mouthful. His the whole definite game. favorite. Yeah. <laughs> and we see already we have the uh, the early invade here coming out of Imperial Titans. Where they sent Razin Lee and Clannon up top to go ahead and take out the uh, Lee Sin's red. They're probably expecting that early game uh, invade from Lee Sin and him take coming down to Razin Lee's red. So they're just gonna go ahead and use this time and take it for themselves. Yeah, it's actually a really smart move. I really like that they did that because obviously the Lee Sin is going to look to get that invade. And the fact that they started the red side kind of predicting the Lee Sin's move there, I think it's a really well done move by uh, by Titans. Well thought out. Thanks so too. It looks Raz like we already see uh, almost Smeagol making the invade here in the red side. So doing exactly as they predicted. And they even, as you can see down there, they already have the ward here on red side. So Razzle didn't exactly see him come into the red, but he's going to see him now. Maybe we see, pull something off here. Now nah, just the slow coming through. Almost Smeagol's going to be able to move right out. Yeah, and he just does. each other off there. Down in the bottom lane, uh, Lazy Asian has to blow his flash as he gets ignited by the Morgana. In the jungle, Razin and Smeagol go, out, go at it. Pops the passive for Zac. The mid laners both are coming down. And the TP comes in. Wow, what a big TP there. Razin gets the Q off on Zac in first blood. For Titans, or sorry, for Black. Ooh, almost Smeagol makes a well placed flash right there to get out, and the resonating strike to Dragon is able to fully move him out of the jungle. That was a really great play from him making the move in there. Uh, I don't believe Razzle did not have his smite up yet. He had used smite earlier on, I believe, to take the red buff initially in the other jungle. So when he moved to his red, uh, Smeagol still had his smite and was able to steal it away. Uh, we're at, and then make the clean escape. Unfortunately, the teleport wasn't able to come through. I believe as, as long as Zack can respawn, that then takes the teleport proc off of his bloblet there. Yeah, either that or Singe flipped him. I don't. I think we didn't get a really good look at that. So either Singe flipped him or uh, the TP got canceled oh, yeah. somehow. As well as what's really interesting is that Titans knowingly Sin did that. 
taking the red, knowing Lee Sin was probably going to be there. They even wooded it out, and yet he still gets caught. That's kind of questionable to me. You'd think that after, you know, he knows he's going to be there. They even predict that they have the wood and still being caught. That's kind of just lazy, to be honest. That's yeah, true. KRP it took a lot of time moving down in that lane. So it's definitely kind of a questionable call. It was a questionable team call right there as far as uh, they didn't really have a clear idea of what everybody was going to be doing. Giorgio out of mana in the top lane. That's something that sucks as a Singe player. He's running out of that mana so quick. He's running out of the mana, but he still has, and he's already used all of his pots, but he has already a 10 CS gold lead, so a whole wave he's ahead of uh, Clannon up there. So already exerting the pressure, he's going to go ahead and make that early back. His teleport's already down, so he's going to have to walk back in the lane. But uh, we can see here, regardless of our predictions, the lane dominance seems to already be going into Imperial Titan's favor, uh, regardless of the gold lead being in Imperial Blacks. Yeah, bottom lane and top and mid lane tend to be taking a little bit of a gold lead, and I think that's kind of from uh, Bard having to go back so early after being ignited by Morgana. Obviously, that's going to kind of create a little bit of a pressure, but it is pushing in, so hopefully they can get that CS and kind of even it up there. The good thing about Bard is that he does bring that sustain. Uh, it's not too big of a sustain, but it's big enough to kind of keep you in lane, keep you even with the other, the other opponent. Yeah, and that's really what Toru Kingu is going to need. He's got to stay in this lane and soak up as much experience as he can. Even getting the solo experience right here is really going to come to his benefit. As long as he can dodge out on those uh, Morgana bindings, that's, that's really all he needs to do in this lane. Is just stay alive, keep his experience and CS up, and uh, he'll be fine. It'll count as the win in their book. It's really dependent on this Vayne to kind of just go even. She, they're dependent on Vayne to be able to take down the Zac and the Mundo in late game. If Vayne gets super far behind in the early game, it's going to be extremely hard for them in the late game. So right now, I mean, if I were the, if I were Black's bottom lane, just sit back, relax, take your time, don't try to fight too much, and just get the Vayne out without dying. Stay about even in CS, and to be honest, I think that's a bigger victory uh, than you'd assume. Looks like we got a roam coming down here from Giorgio on Singe, moving into the mid lane. Valder's at really low health, though. I'm not sure how much he can do coming into this fight. And holy care, he is able to burn the flash, though. Gets the flash out. There you go. But also Brazzy. Giorgio burning his ultimate on top of that as well. So a lot burned there in mid lane. As well as bottom, Razin ganks through the through the lane. Lesion uh, just kind of goes through the portal, gets out of there clean. I think Lee Sin's looking for that magical journey gank here. Razin's still there though. Oh, and we had gets the ignite off. TP comes in from Giorgio. Giorgio hasn't burned his ghost yet. Doesn't look like he really wants to. Oh, gets he does. Flash out of Echo. There it is. So right there, a lot of reactive plays coming out of Imperial Black. They they already saw that Razin Lee was down there in bottom lane, so they went ahead and. Countered that with the teleport as well as Smeagol coming in with that magical journey. But with three people still being there to collapse on it, the magical journey was really more to their detriment than anything. If they would have been better just coming through lane and keeping that element surprise uh, with almost Smeagol. But yeah. coming in like that, they were able to easy, easily get off the CC on top of them and uh, yeah, take him out right there. And they took the magical journey in with the wood in the bush, knowing the Zac was still there. That uh, it's kind of a questionable call. I don't think they really would have been able to win that fight, though. So, I don't know. I don't know why they did. That. I think they're looking for it again here as Ezra is kind of roaming bottom. Yeah, Might we got going... Ezra and almost Smeagol rolling in. So this like is going to be a big magical bottom. journey, yeah. So we got backs coming through. Looks like they've already put enough distance between each other. It was black to a degree, but it really looks like Titans has made the most errors in this game, which is kind of why they're starting a little bit behind here as far as kills-wise, and with the Dragon Control. Yeah, we see Giorgio making an easy escape uh, out of here in top lane. And yeah, Imperial really Black take, to uh, they grab the first Dragon here out of the game too, really. So, like we commented on before the game even started, really this early game is where they have to assert the most dominance and where they really have to start coming ahead. And we already see that uh, out, out of this Ezreal coming here with already one kill, one assist, and Lee Sin doing his job with the two assists or the two kills already. Will KRP go down right here? Ooh, and wow, the roam out of Lazy Asian. Very Bye. nicely done. They're going to kill the Zac passive here. And, oh, comes up just in time. In. 
It wow. gets the kill. And the mechanical skill that's required of that. Look at that. <laughs> that was the most interesting flash I've ever seen. He flashes on spot, gets the kill still. Whatever works, I guess. Bard gets the double, though. I guess that's not the person you want to get the double on, but a kill's a kill. Yeah, just trying to keep him down is really what they're trying to pull out of this. And with all this, all the money that they've already filtered into Bard, he does complete the Frost Queen's claim as well as the Sightstone. So he's already a little bit ahead of uh, Full Metal Echo there in the bottom lane. Yeah, what's really interesting is despite them being of Oh, sorry, kill going on. Right when you think you have a breath and another kill gets on. Yeah, that was kind of just lazy positioning from Bard. You can't be up that far in the lane when uh, Morgana is right there. Obviously, she's going to go for the bind. You've got to stay behind your minions or you got to ward that bush. You can't just walk in blind. Dimple play. Just a lazy error there by, uh, by Lazy Asian. <laughs> Well, the issue with that really was that uh, Imperial Black had the wave pushed up, so they really didn't have a lot to do back there. He was just trying to move in and stay on the same line as the wave. Looks like we yeah. have almost Smeagol caught roaming around here in the river. But they decided to back off, just get enough damage down. A little poke here and there. Nothing yeah. too big. And we see out of the CS right now, we have pretty much everybody on the side of, Imper of uh, Titans here have a pretty sizable lead. Especially down there in the bottom lane on Detritus. Already up a whole BF sword, it looks like, onto uh, Toru Kingu. Yeah, it's something that's kind of really disappointing is that bottom lane CS lead. You expect Vayne to kind of keep up, but down 30 CS right now is really hindering her. It does have to play with the that Bard has roamed. So obviously she's had to play a bit more safe. But 30 CS, I don't know if it's worth the roam after that. Yeah, very true. Looks like we have Giorgio going in here on Clannon, not able to get enough damage off, and even still, uh, Clannon still has his, uh, I believe it's mask, uh, Sadism, there we go, um, on top of that, so he's able to proc that at any time, pretty much get back to full health, so he's really not that worried at all on a uh, offensive singe up here. Yeah, Giorgio's trying to apply the pressure, but even Giorgio on his signature pick with Singe is down in CS right now against the Mundo. It does have to do with TPing bottom. Uh, he did obviously TP bottom, get down a little bit, but uh, every single lane is down by at least 15 CS, and that's got to be something you're worried about if you're black. Well, they're hoping right now to supplement that with the gold that they got from uh, from the kills. Looks like Full Metal Echo is going in there. He gets a stun off on both members of Imperial Black, and they're able to take out Toru Kingo very easily. Laze Asian does not get the stun off onto Razenly or Echo, and it looks like Giorgio just matches the teleport and doesn't get much done out of it. Yeah, kind of a late TP there uh, for Giorgio. He's not going to do much with that TP. Well, she's kind of just wasting time. Well, it seemed like it was, it was really able to match it. It, it was kind of laid out of both top laners there, not able yeah. to get in on any of the action. Um, however, they were still able to take out Toru Kingu in that engage. So, again, their win condition is, is definitely going down the drain really fast. Their slate game is looking scarier and scarier for Imperial Black. Yeah, if I were Black at this point, you really just got to rely on these picks. You got to get these picks off. Uh, got to set up your defensive wards, get your pinks out find the enemy trying to roam in your jungle and, and rely on picks because right now 5v5 you're just not going to stand a chance against these guys they're playing really really well and they're making up for the lazy errors that they made in the early game and we saw like in the early game with a lot of those early kills that we got coming out of almost Smeagol they, they were all proactive plays and within the last 5 minutes Imperial Black has pretty much all been reactionary as far as where they start with their team movements so really they got to shake off whatever tilt they got uh, from the Rones, from Razenly, and just really get back into the groove and start moving around that uh, Lee Sin pressure around the map. And really what they need to do is have Toru Kingu freeze that lane back there. They lost the tower, and right now it would be so crucial for them to have it back towards on their side of the map. But with him pushing it up like this, they're in a really scary spot. Yeah, they really shouldn't be pushing it up. I mean, you've got to know that if you're going to push it up, that Zach's gank time is going to take advantage of it. But we've got a fight on our hands here. Spiegel gets way caught in the position there, just blown up really, really quick. Toro still going in. She switches her target over to Lucian. Lucian dashes away. He's out safe. Azir goes in, flashes, alts in the vein. An easy kill there for Toro, or sorry, for Detrius. Detritus. Can't get his name right. 
And that's uh, that's the end of that. Dragon's up in nine seconds. I don't think either team's gonna go for it. If you saw right there, really that was real crucial in those plays was the Morgana. She got off the Black Shield just in time. As soon as she saw almost Smeagol going in on that Lee Sin, he was looking for the Dragon's Rage to kick to try to back into the team, but she got the Black Shield off just in time, as well as able to throw off the Binding onto the Vein as soon as uh, Holy Care P pushed her right into the team. So really great job in Full Metal Echo there. Right now, Toking has got to grab this wave. He's just got to freeze out his turret. He's got to sit at his turret and farm. That's kind of their main hope in this game is that vein. They just got to sit there and uh, get the vein farmed up and hope that they don't uh, give any more free kills like they have been. Exactly. Um, we see vein down here already starting to push the wave again. So hopefully, hopefully they have a plan going on for this. I'm not sure if... This is really just a blind push or whatnot, but I guess this isn't the LCS, so can't expect <laughs> everything out of them. Something I tell my team is uh, you really got to make the other team play your game. Right when you start playing the other team's game, it's so hard to come back from it. It really looks like right now, Black's playing uh, Titan's game, and they're getting beat at it. They got beat in the early game. They got beat at uh, the roaming game, and right now, Titans are just grouping up. They're probably going to go for this mid turret now that the bottom turret's gone. And from there, they're probably going to go around the map, get all those out of turrets, and uh, push push down black where they're vulnerable. Right, exactly. And if we look at uh, the gold differential right now, it's looking like even though uh, mid lane, the CS difference, as well as the uh, kills, are all in the favor of Ezreal there on Imperial Black, the gold lead is pretty much, it's still really close, only 100 difference between both the bin laners, uh, and the difference between all the other lanes is pretty substantial, with it being 1 to 2k between our top ADC as well as the support, so really, the, right now, um, as far as Imperial Black is concerned, Veilder is their last hope as far as keeping them ahead in this game, so really, that which meaning that in these fights, they're going to be hoping for a lot of kite back, and not getting caught by any of this really heavy engage by... Uh, Imperial Titans, which is going to be very difficult for them. Something yeah, you mentioned in Champ Select is that their wave clear is really lacking. And if you get behind early, you really feel it when you don't have the best wave clear. Luckily, they do have the Ezreal, and if he gets the Iceborne Gauntlet, that brings a tiny bit of wave clear. But uh, it's not it's really not enough. And to be honest, I don't know why they're going for this dragon. Don't know why they're trying to contest this. Yeah, easy take for Black. Georgie is going to try to go in. Culling's shot out, but I don't yeah, know why Black tried to go for that. They should have probably just kept Georgie top and pushed that down that turret because they're not going to contest a dragon at this point. Well, they, they just weren't able to move into position in time, but like I said earlier, really they're going to be looking for the fights in those smaller choke points like River right there. If they would have had Giorgio just a few Teemos in front, he definitely would have been able to... <laughs> start off that engage and uh, really move it ahead for Imperial Black. Oh, and, yeah. and Teemos are the official unit of measure for League of Legends. Ah, ah okay, okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> Thank you for educating me. <laughs> yeah, the Vayne's down right now. Almost double CS at 18 minutes. 86 CS at 18 minutes. It's definitely not what you want to be sitting at. But a lot of that is from her not managing the waves properly. She's been pushing the waves when she should have frozen them. And she's been putting them in a situation. She's been putting herself in a situation where obviously they're going to gank her. They're going to be all over bot lane. That Zach ganks the bottom and just focused on the whole entire game. Yeah, and Zach's ganks are really incredibly potent there in, in really all the lanes. But especially in bot, the... Uh, the range that Elastic Slingshot has now enables him to put himself in really strange positions to come into the lane. So, especially for a Vayne with very limited mobility, she really has to rely on the proper use of Tumble um, as well as the Condemn in order to get herself in a good position away from Zach. And she, so far, she just hasn't been able to pull that off. And Lazy Asian has to burn his flash there just from trying to defend a pink. Yeah, we that's, see right now uh, that's what I call a noob trap right there when you're fighting over a pink. Yeah, even their jungle right now isn't uh, isn't safe for them. Pretty much, no. uh, excuse me, the Titans are just moving up the uh, line of scrimmage here with wards and starting to get uh, offensive wards, as you can see in their jungle. Essentially, from the beginning of River 
uh, all the way up to their tier 2 turret is where they've moved up their ward line. So really showing right here that this is they're trying to uh, start pressing their advantage. It's been a really clean game so far. Besides the first five minutes, it's been pretty clean for Crown. Uh, oh, sorry, for uh, Titans. They've been doing a really good job at moving the ward line up. That is something that you want to do. You want to choke them out of their jungle. If you've got a lead like this, you want to be able to just press your leads, stomp them out of their own jungle. And right now, as you said, it's not even safe to go in their own jungle. Right, exactly. And we can see right here where, uh, like we've been talking about this whole game, where that's... Uh, the wave clear is really lacking for Imperial Black. They, they're pretty much sat here on this turret, and Titans aren't exactly pressing that advantage, but as soon as they do and have a full four or five man there in mid lane, there's really not going to be a lot of options for Imperial Black to push them off here. If you're Black right now, what are you saying to your team? How do you get back into this? So the way Imperial Black is really going to do it is uh, have Giorgio keep doing his thing in top lane, um, keep that split and create a lot of pressure, um, and really just have them grouped. That's really what we need. We, we keep having Lazy Asian moving out here, getting picked off. And see, we have it again. Doesn't take, luckily it didn't take that uh, magical journey there. But really, they just they have to be decisive in their movements. Um, as you can see right here, we have some members moved ahead on Imperial Titans, it might have had a second to move in there, but again, we just have a lot of people moved out of position and not a lot of time to make something happen. Yeah, and this siege is just going to keep happening because they don't have a lot of wave clear. Besides that, Israel, the wave clear is really lacking. And now they're probably going to rotate bottom, catch that wave with Mundo. Yeah, another cooldown to look at here is um, Full Metal Echo's Black Shield. We saw the Black Shield was used there, uh, kind of kind of a Twitch scared uh, mechanic. But really, as soon as that Black Shield is on cooldown, that's when almost Spiegel knows that's his time to move in there and get that Dragon's Rage and grab a high priority target and kick him back into their team in order to change the uh, the way that these fights go. Yeah, the Morgana was a really good pick into the Lee Sim. Obviously, that minimizes as many plays as as possible from Smeagol. And there's a beautiful pick by the Morgana and a good Bartle to kind of minimize the damage done there. They go in and Ezreal goes down. Huge Azir wall to push them back into the turret. Giorgio trying to run around and do as much damage do what Singe does best. There goes the chase on Asian and he's down. Giorgio trying to do the damage. The barrier comes out from KRP. Smeagol bounces back onto Zack. Kills Zack. Azir goes down as well. Now Giorgio's trying to clean up the Mundo. Clannon. Trying to run away here. Looks like he's gonna get out. Can he kill Smeagol? And he does it. He kills Smeagol. And it's just the two top laners left. That actually turned out really well for Black. A lot better than it should have. Yeah, it was really surprising uh, how well that got through. Uh, really, the only misplay was uh, Toru Kingu kind of. Uh, he didn't exactly see as uh, Azir in the bush, and as soon as that Emperor's Divide came out, he also took the Morgana Binding at the same time. So it really, he lost all of his damage uh, after, you know, the first five seconds of that fight. Uh, but he was able to put enough down, and they were able to take out um, the majority of the members of Imperial Titans. So that was a good turnaround by them. So hopefully that's a sign of more things to come in this game. Well, another thing is, is Azir really didn't use his wall properly there. He's got to use his wall to peel the, the Singed off. He actually ended up pushing Lee Sin and I think Bard back into the tower, and it wasn't very helpful. They've got to use the, some type of peel they have to get that singed off of them. That's something that I did mention is they have a lot of engage. They want to run at you, so you've got to use that Azir wall defensively. You can't use it offensively. You've got to use it as something to peel you peel the, the singed off. Otherwise, Singe is going to jump on your backline that whole time. And Giorgio did exactly that. He was on that backline for a long time, burned down the enemy, and that's what you get. Here we go. we got Giorgio again popping the ultimate. Takes the Emperor's Divide, but not in time. Pushes him back in lane, but luckily a quick flash out by Holy KRP. Moving the whole team out in here. Imperial Titans just roaming through. Luckily, they singled out uh, Valder here, and they take him out there in the mid lane. The whole team collapsing here very well. Almost Smeagol gets the kick off, but not in time enough. And the whole team of Imperial Titans is just barreling down here on Imperial Black. Yeah, and, much uh, better fight there for Titans. They definitely picked a great fight. It really started out. Obviously, KRP kind of got caught, but Zach got that massive four-man knockup. 
and that really set up the fight really, really well. Obviously, Clanning jumps on Velder, gets the kill on Velder. The Bardalt was way too late to save Velder, and actually ended up mispositioning Smeagol a little bit more. So it wasn't the best Bardalt, it was misused, and now you've got uh, Titans knocking on your front door with that one team fight. So they definitely made it up for their previous mistakes, and they, uh, I think the Razen had an amazing play, and that's kind of the reason why they won that team fight there. Yeah, definitely. These uh, these Zach Elastic Slingshots have really been on point this game. Um, and as we saw right before that engagement, I was going to comment how the um, the, war the Vision game has been coming out of Imperial Black. They also, they for a moment there, they had Vision superiority in their own jungle. Uh, but it's looking like uh, the Titans are starting to move the line back into the river, more so into their jungle area, uh, especially after losing that, that last dragon. We're really starting to put the pressure in, and as we're starting to transition here in the late game, as you can see, the 200 CS already coming out of uh, Detritus as well as Clan in there in the top lane. It's really starting to close out the game with this gold differential. Yeah, and again, Toro Kingu's CS is just so underwhelming. You've got 121 CS at 25 minutes. It's really going to hurt you. Vayne is a ADC that relies on items, and when you don't have gold to get items, and obviously she has no kills right now. She has no items, she's not going to burn through anybody, and that's a lot of their damage. The thing is with this comp is, we've said a thousand times, Vayne is going to be the key to this comp, and she really, really has been snuffed out this whole entire game. Yeah, Imperial Titans definitely did a good job of realizing what their win condition was, and uh, really capitalizing on punishing that. So, when you're looking at this team here, like really the only person that's been completely shut out has been Toru Kingu on Vayne. Uh, the rest of that has gone pretty much exactly what we said. Giorgio is really trying to keep that split push going. But as of right now, without the wave clear really being on uh, Black's team, they're having a real tough time keeping them off of their inhibitor turret here. So Giorgio yeah. is going to have to burn his teleport in order to come back up and, and try to defend. Yeah, that's that's the massive lack of wave clear. It's, it's just so hard to split push when you don't have wave clear. To wait to be able to split push properly, you need to have somebody to wave clear so they don't be they're not able to seed you five before because obviously they're gonna try to seed you five before. And then with the Azir poking and the Morgana binds, you're just asking for a hard time. They got so much siege with the Azir and the uh, the Mundo as well. They go diving in there, Zach on the back line, Giorgio kind of just running for his life, planning. Gets targeted by a tower. Beautiful Bardal for three people, but KRP just knocks them all back. Getting that AoE damage, and Toro Kingu both goes down. Lesion goes down, as well as Smeagol being poked off. He has to flash away, and it ends off being a two for one in the end there. Yeah, and we saw that Velder was able to do a really good job staying on the outside, getting that constant Ezreal poke down. Uh, that's really He really did played his job well, and Toru Kingo is so far behind, he's not able to move in a position to do damage without taking enough that obviously kills him. Because uh, really at this point in the game, he needs to have at least two or three items completed in order to take down that heavy front line. Um, but really, he went in for the damage dealers uh, to his detriment there. Yeah, they get that bottom inhibitor turret. Obviously, they're, they're looking for that bottom inhibitor turret uh, to kind of be able to pressure around the map. They need to send Georgie bottom. They need to get Georgie to go bottom, get that other in outer and hit outer turret, sorry. Uh, so then they can start pressuring his other stuff around the map. The other team just has to sit there and wait for the for the enemy, wood up their own jungle, get their buffs, just kind of wait for the vein. You really can't take fights at the moment. You're down 10k gold. It's so hard to get these games uh, going when you have such a such a lead. From the enemy team, it's really hard to come back. Well, the problem with sending uh, Giorgio bottom is, if you notice, the teleport isn't going to be up for probably another two yeah, minutes or so. True. And really, right now, uh, the Titans are going to have their eyes set on that inhibitor as well as Baron. As soon as they have that inhibitor open up, it's pretty much going to be a free Baron. Until then, they're really just looking to keep the pressure up. Um, we can already see Detritus as well as Razenly down there in the bot lane trying to secure that inhibitor so they can go ahead and grab the Baron and uh, power play through the rest of this game. So really this is going to be all based off of how the team play goes for this last engage here on who can save this inhibitor. Yeah, you've got to make a desperation play right now. Ooh, the Tempered Fate misses missing. There. Yeah. This is really desperation time for Black. They've got to make a really good play. They've got to get Georgia on the back line. 
and uh, hopefully take out the carries. Otherwise, Titans is going to roll through this game. Looking to see how they set up here. Really, this is just a superior siege uh, comp here coming out of the Titans. Just able to easily move in here and take out this inhibitor with not much left to uh, to really rebut with. We saw as soon as that resonating strike was able to hit Detritus, the Black Shield immediately came on to from Full Metal Echo. Really good play there. Uh, recognizing the Dragon's Rage could come through at any time. Watching out for those insect plays. Yeah, now they've got that massive wave top. Really, it's just going around the horn. It's playing this game slowly. It's playing this game methodically. That's what they've got to do uh, as Titans. It's kind of just take your time. They've got the game in their hands right now. They're just trying not to throw. That's the big thing about this tournament is so many teams have thrown before. You don't want to throw your lead. You just want to sit back and play this game uh, with the lead you have. I mean, at this very moment, if they keep playing like this, they've got the win. They've just got to be careful, keep their carry safe, use that black shield properly, and they'll be fine. And there we go. As soon as those dark bindings happens, Razan Lee takes that time to immediately elastic slingshot on top of Quick Toru Kingu, and he's completely deleted there out of this fight. We got Razan Lee, since he was so far in that back line, he's taken out pretty quickly. But holy KRP. KRP, yeah, throws that damage through. Just shredding through people, KRP. And then Razan Lee just keeps... I mean, that's so much CC. You've got the Morgana Binding, and then right when you land a Morgana Binding, Zach's just going to jump on you. Really, really tough uh, for the players, especially if you're a squishy vein. Really tough for you to get out of that. Yeah, and it's just really highlighting the communication here coming out of Titans. As soon as that Binding goes off, Ryzen Lee was already starting to charge that Elastic Slingshot. So, so far, really great coordination coming out of them. And we'll see what they do with this. It's kind of confusing that they haven't uh, transitioned. They never transitioned that lead into that top turret. Could have been an easier take, but then again, they, they ended up taking that inhibitor there in mid. So not a whole lot of faults uh, finding so far in their strategy. Yeah, I mean, Baron would have been just as nice as Dragon there, but it doesn't really matter. I think at this point, you just got to get Dragon, go back, get Baron, then go top and end the game. You've got two inhibitors already. If you get the third, I mean, it's pretty much you've got the game. Uh, as we said, you know, 5v5, Titans are going to win, and there's really no no chance of split pushing at this point. Black, you've just got to hope for a miracle kick. Um, you catch Lucian out, you catch some of their damage out, and uh, if you can do that, maybe you can come back in the game, get a couple turrets, and if you keep doing that, I mean, who knows, maybe we've got a, a game on our hands, but otherwise, I think, I think Titans have got this. Yeah, looking at this, Imperial Black is going to have to pull off at least two to three full aces um, in order to really come back into this game. Because especially with it being only 30 minutes in the game, our death timers are only going to be looking at about uh, 30 to 45 seconds. So they're going to be back in time to at least, they're going to only be able to take the, the first two outer turrets. They only have one turret down in this game. They just don't have enough, they didn't have enough momentum built up from the early game in order to come back from this. Uh, in my opinion, they're just delaying out the surrender. <coughs> Yeah, this top tier is going to be an easy take there. Obviously, the Mundo tanking that. He's just so huge at this point. Yeah, three item Mundo. There's there's really not much you can do against that. And we can see that even with just his passive HP regen, you can already see the numbers ticking out from him. Oh, Razzle League getting kind of caught out here. There. Well, it looks like a five person tempered fate. Why do get slung in the back there? Toru King wow. never made that shot there on Razan Lee. He moved out with a sliver of health. And for some reason, uh, Toru King made the shots on the clan and instead. It was kind of interesting because he had moved himself that far forward, but it decided to not take the shot and get the kill. If only to just pop the passive. Yeah, Toru King is way too far forward there. It's either Smeagol's not communicating and not stepping up, or uh, Toru got a little bit jumpy there. Obviously, you're going to be picked off. Your vein, you're super squishy, especially against a super fed Azir who has a death cap. Uh, Rylai's Crystal, and, uh, what's that? Nash is too, sorry. Already, that's, that's a very, very strong Azir. They, I think, obviously this game's a scratch, but going into next game, what do you think Black has to do to adjust to kind of Titan's playstyle? So, really in this game that we saw that, uh, almost Mule can definitely put an advantage there in the early game. So I think putting him again on an early game jungler, uh, like let's say a Lee Sin or an Elise, something like that is definitely going to be 
um, a good pickup for them. They need to round out their comps better. Um, Detritus has really shown, as well as Full Metal Echo, has shown that they're a very good bot lane. And there we got the, G the uh, Surrender Vote coming through here with Imperial Black. It was only a matter of time, so. Yeah, GG, good game. First game, obviously, it's the best of three series, guys. Uh, game two will be happening around 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, going into game two, I mean, as Black, you, you got to look at your team. You got to look at what Titans are good at. Obviously, they're going to try to fight you. They've got that 5v5 comp. Do you run more of a 5v5 comp? Do you run more split push comp again? Uh, if they're going to do the split push comp more again, I think they have to grab somebody with a bit more wave clear than what they have now. Because at the moment of what they have now, it's just, it wasn't enough, obviously, with that Ezreal pick. And they did get a lot of their personal picks, but it seemed like they were drafting more for themselves than as a team. They got the Bard, that's obviously Lazy Asian's best. They got the the Singe, that's Giorgio's best. Uh, they got Sme they got Lee Sin on Smeagol, that's his best, right? So they've obviously got the best champions for for uh, each of their players. I don't know if I'd they... say best. I would definitely say most comfortable. <laughs> most comfortable. Sorry, sorry, yeah. Most comfortable. But I mean, it just didn't look like they, they meshed well together. Yeah, exactly. I think they just took a lot of comfort picks and threw them together, and that doesn't make a team, as we saw in this game. Um, going through and talking about the next game, really, I think something that they have to look at is really the positioning, uh, that the way that Toru King likes to position. I think he's going to pay off a lot better um, if he's able to play something with high mobility, like let's say a, a Lucian or a Tristana. I can see that would definitely play a lot better to his play style, and I think would help him a lot better into the next game. Uh, so hopefully we can see that switch up there. Uh, as far as the rest of the game, their, their team fights were somewhat solid because we saw even with the 10k gold lead uh, that Imperial Titans weren't exactly able to finish out fights very well. They were really only paying off small picks. So if, the, if Imperial Black is able to really pull forward with a, a better team comp and something a little bit more well-rounded, this next game could definitely be a whole lot closer. Yeah, for sure. I definitely agree. I think um, really... What Black excels at is those those team comps that are a little little bit throw you off. They they uh, something that uh, I've talked with their coach Epilepsy before. Uh, they like to put Giorgio in anything. He's played York. He played Trundle before Trundle was big. He'll play that singed. He'll play these these top picks that will just bully your lane. Um, obviously, this time his singed didn't work out. But they do play some really good team comps. Toro Kingu is also a really good MF player. Vote is a good Ari player. Um, are they going to try to build more of a Wombo combo team comp? Are they going to build more of a, a team comp that, that synergizes better together? Uh, I mean, Black, even though they lost that game, it, I, I wouldn't say it was complete stomp. Uh, I wouldn't say it was an Immortals versus uh, TIP game <laughs> i think it was it was decently close they did end up winning that one fight in the bottom lane so they didn't lose every single fight even though they weren't a team fighting team so i think the potential's there they just really have to put the pieces together and i then you know i think they have a chance from there yeah i think so too um so looking at a little bit of the damage stats there from the last game uh we can see that uh holy krp really put out the damage there on azir pretty much doubling everybody on his team and really doubling everybody in the game, um, put out almost 30,000 damage. Uh, pretty impressive um, as far as uh, the damage stats are concerned. You Really, uh, being a positional champion and having to uh, move around all of your sand soldiers in order to get the damage off, really a testament to how well he is a uh, diverse mid laner. And uh, Giorgio, of course, on his signature Singe, was able to put out the most damage for his team, really just being an annoying Singe, moving throughout all of uh, the Titans line up, tossing back and forth, and uh, with that poison gas going through, was able to pull out the most damage. So we can see that Giorgio is really going to be the guy that they're looking to to mesh this team together. Uh, let's hope that we can put him on a little bit more of a playmaker uh, than really an annoyance, I think, is, is going to help out a lot more here. Yeah, getting Giorgio on a playmaker where he can TP in, uh, either he can TP in and set up a play bottom lane, <clears throat> get that bottom lane ahead, or whether he can just be a nuisance split pushing. Again, we saw the uh, the Jax ban from um, Titans come out, which you know says to me really that they don't want to face more of a split pushing team. So maybe put Giorgio on somebody like Fior, like Trundle if they can get it. They are on blue side this game, so they won't have to give up the power pick up Mundo. Uh, they get they do get first pick at the power pick. So we'll see uh, who they decide to grab. Again, they only get two bans. 
I don't know whether they'll stay the same or maybe uh, the coach will try to change them up a bit. But uh, some stats I do want to look at for that game as well is Ward's placed 100 to 82, 100 for um, uh, Titans and 82 for Black. Obviously, the Ward dominance was just there for Titans. You saw in that, that mid-game, they had just completely taken over the jungle. Uh, Black somewhat got it back kind of in the mid-game. But besides that, Titans just steamrolled over the jungle, kept catching Lazy Asian out multiple times, uh, caught Toro Kingru out multiple times. I mean, we said that uh, Black was going to be the team that's, that needed to ward while well, they needed to pick people off, but Crown actually ended up doing that a little bit more than Black did that game. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see. Sorry, threw me off. It's, it's Titan still, not Crown. <laughs> Get that out of there. Wait, am I saying Crown? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I'm sorry. Oh, that's Because I just faced Crown, that's why. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was... Thanks for linking that. I was thinking the whole time, I was like, why am I not seeing Ward's place? Why? <laughs> what am I missing yeah. out on here? I'm not you. Interesting, it puts it through on the site and not in the client. That's really weird. Yeah, so, yeah, you have to... Screen. Unfortunately, with custom games, how they work is you can't actually search them unless you're their, your own custom games. So somebody else had to link me that custom game. So. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, able to get a little bit more of the stats here on screen. Um, so really, yeah, hopefully... They can shake it off and don't tell too much, especially with a surrender coming through. It definitely is uh, really disheartening for a team to have to surrender in a game. But, uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully they can really pull together. The The item builds coming here out of Imperial Black, I feel like, were the correct choices. They were able to get um, Ezreal. He, he was able to get the Mirror Mana fully stacked. Uh, he got the Lord Dominic's regards uh, right after the Iceborne Gauntlet. So he was able to shred through some of uh, the tank line, but as we see with uh, Clan in there on Mundo, he didn't even drop a single death that game. Uh, he just He got to the point where once he hit that three item spike uh, with Sunfire Warmogs as well as Spirit Visage, he was really unkillable and just moving forward into the game was just a force to be reckoned with. And they just didn't have an answer with uh, Toru Kingu being pushed so far back, they didn't have a way to really catch back up in this game. So hopefully, like you said, in this next game, I'm, I'm really hoping they pull out like a Wombo combo. Uh, something like a Malphite in the top lane or, or make it like a Gnar. I feel like it would be yeah. a really good pickup. Um, and then just some overall really good damage and maybe playing to more of Toru Kingu's style and they can get a better uh, champ for him to play on. Yeah, yeah, I think... Uh... Something that I, I've talked to Razen before is they really focus on that mid lane. They really want to get their mid lane ahead. Uh, as we did see KRP, you know, he said he did the most damage. They, they want to get KRP ahead. They want to get him on a carry. They want to get him on somebody where he's going to be able to do a lot of damage, output a lot of damage. As Black, you got to see that KRP kind of single-handedly carried that game. I, I think he did, you know, he did do the most damage. He was the siege in that, caught people out. He had some pretty good ults. So if I were black as well, I'd, I'd notice that, get Smeagol to go mid, help out Velder a little bit, get uh, get the snowball rolling mid so that Velder kind of has a better chance against the Zier this game. Uh, oh, sorry, against KRP this game. Uh, and then obviously, I don't think we're going to see KRP on his famous Yasuo, but uh, even from, you know, when somebody mains Yasuo, it, they're looking to kill you. He's an aggressive mid laner. He likes to win his lane. Uh, something Razen said is, you know, doesn't see KRP lose lane often. Um, so, yeah, Black's really going to try to shut down KRP. I think the, the key to beating the Titans are you've got to shut down KRP and uh, good warding. If you have good warding, you can track Razen and you can shut down KRP. I really think Black has a has a better chance of winning this game. And yeah, I agree with you. I think seeing a nice wombo comp wombo combo from these guys will be really nice because I think they have good synergy, uh, Black, and I think they have really good potential. And I think if they just have a comp where the champions mesh well together, I think they stand a much much better chance. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, as far as, just so our viewers uh, know, the reason why we were talking about KRPs. Uh, Yasuo up so much as he does have I believe over a thousand games in uh, solo queue on Yasuo so this is a guy and as far as his other champions too aren't that much farther behind he has hundreds of games played on Azir as well as uh, picks like Ryze, uh, Zed and Echo so really this is a, a pretty versatile mid laner who has 
a lot of experience on some of these really meta champs. So really, that's going to be the focus of uh, Imperial Titan squad is really getting their mid laner ahead. As we saw in this game, he didn't exactly... There wasn't a lot of focus there in mid lane to get him ahead. I don't believe Razen even ganked a single time in no. mid lane. Yeah. It was pretty much all the focus was placed on the bot lane. On the bot lane, yeah. Right, and that was... With that being one of Black's main winning conditions, that was the correct choice. Yeah. So hopefully, yeah, I mean... really smart. Yeah, so maybe something more out of our support picks here. We'll see more of a peeling champ uh, yeah. to, to really kind of... Uh, make up for maybe some positional mistakes that Toru King might make. So, you know, maybe we'll see like a Janna or a Thresh come out in order to, to pull him out of some of these situations. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, even the Morgana pick on the other side, uh, because I do know Lazy Asian plays Morgana, pulling out the Morgana, giving the Black Shield would be nice. And, oh, we are in chip select. All right. Wow, and champs like game two, guys. Uh, obviously, it's same teams, but this time uh, black is on blue side. Titans are on purple side. Hopefully, I don't call them crown this game. <laughs> now, remember, black only has the two bands, but this time they're blue, so they do get the power pick. Obviously, the Yasuo band's going to come out. KRP, talk about his Yasuo. It's going to be banned probably this entire tournament, so don't expect that to come out uh, very often. The Z band comes back on Lazy Asian. Uh, Shaco. So I guess they're going with the same bands, Band of the Yasuo and the Shaco. Yeah, those are just two power picks for um, for Imperial Titans that they really just don't want to see in this game. As you can see, we're gonna they're gonna time out their last band. This band, this game, they do still have only two bands uh, from the, the miscommunication earlier on in this week and having to remake the game. Uh, they did lose out on that last band and. This time we're going to see the Titans. They're going to ban away their own Mundo from last game. It worked really well for them last time, but we haven't seen the Trundle ban come out yet. So really they're going to try to leave up a couple of these um, these really meta picks and try to see which one they can pull out in this game. So yep, the Trundle's going to stay up. Uh, I can see that either being first pick from either team. Yeah, I really think the Trundle should be picked here. Obviously, Giorgio does play the Trundle. He is such a powerful pick, even though he did get the nerfs in 6.1 um, with the cooldowns, obviously, uh, and then with the Q not being able to Q turrets. He's still such a strong pick, and there you go. Yeah, that's the Trundle pick. Pretty obvious that the Trundle is going to be picked there. He is a very strong champion, and on the other side, Lee Sin is extremely strong or extremely strong jungle. I can't talk um, in this whole entire tournament. Every single jungler seems to play Lee Sin. Uh, Razin is a, is a Lee Sin player. Smeagol is a Lee Sin player. So Lee Sin's going to be high priority. That's locked in, locked in right away. Other than Thresh, Thresh Lee Sin. That's a deadly combo. It's a lot of pick, a lot of skill shots you got to watch out for. No, it doesn't have a locked in yet. It might not necessarily be it. Up oh, there it is. Okay, there and, it is. And, and like we said earlier, with uh, Toru Kingu, excuse me, having uh, some of the um, positional errors, it kind of seems odd that they would go with a more aggressive support here in uh, Trundle. So really, they're going to be really hoping that he can hit uh, those uh, the pillars off at the right time and really use his frozen domain to get in there at the right time. Oh, and hopefully they lock in this Jarvan pick. I've been really hoping to see a Jarvan out of this tournament. Uh, I really feel like Jarvan is in an underrated spot right now. And really with a Wombo combo team, especially when it's combined with a Misfortune, you can mm -hmm. really make a, a Jarvan really uh, pull out dividends for you. Yeah, yeah, I agree 100%. But we do see the Sona MF. Now that lane, I want to talk about this lane just for a second. Sona MF is such a strong lane, but it's a scary lane as well. It's a high risk, high reward lane. The reason why it's high risk is obviously both these champions are super, super mobile. But the damage coming out of both of them is huge. As a jungler right now, if you're Smeagol, you've got to realize that this lane is super mobile. And they're running a Lee Sin, one of the best early game gankers. So I'd give that bottom lane a lot of pressure. Otherwise, your lane's going to be jumped on a lot by this Lee Sin. Especially because they do have a Thresh against the Sona, Sona MF. However... Sona MF, so much poke, so much damage. They can completely bully out a lane if they play it properly. Yeah, and we see that uh, the Titans here are really picking a, a very standard team comp. Uh, going with probably, I'm, I would bet that this Fiora and Lucian get locked in. They're just going for an overall really strong comp. Since we already know that Trundle is going to be heading top, they go ahead and lock in the Fiora with those vital procs. 
it makes it, it kind of negates the Trundle pick here with them not really grabbing any really heavy tanks. Trundle is going to have trouble really figuring out who he wants to ult in these fights. So now, and look, just what we talked about earlier, the full Wombo combo comp coming out of Imperial Black. If that is if they lock in these two, they're really going to be looking for having these team fights set up in their favor. Really, the only thing that's going to hurt them is this early game. The whole comp coming out of Imperial Titans right now is, is very early game oriented. Yep. Yeah, here's something that, that kind of interests me is they might be putting the trundle in the jung in the jungle. I oh, mean, yeah. he is a very flexible champion. He can go in the jungle. Uh, he's definitely better top, but uh, unless they do Malphite jungle, I mean, you never know. They might put the Malphite in the jungle, but yeah, you're right. This is a wombo combo. They're going for that all in. They're doing what Crown or what uh, Titans did last game. They just want to run at you, but they have limited peel besides the pillar and the shield for Moriana, and I mean a tiny heal up, they don't have much peel. And yeah, so that does look like the Malphite Oriana, so we still don't know where the Malphite Trundle are going to go. I assume it's going to be Malphite top, obviously, because they want that Malphite versus Fiore matchup. Malphite is one of the champions that does decently well against Fiore. Uh, definitely shuts down Fiore as far as she can't get kills against him. Uh, but Trundle in the jungle isn't as strong, is still not bad though. Yeah, I think as far as the top lane matchup is going to be concerned, uh, I wouldn't put it completely in uh, Malphite's favor. I, I definitely can see some opportunities uh, for Clannon to go ahead and get some kills onto Giorgio. But again, that's all just going to be based off of game knowledge. With Giorgio being one of the strongest players in last game, I, I can't foresee him putting himself in positions that are too bad. Really, we're going to be looking at more of these uh, teleports coming through. With it looks like Valder going, ahead to, going to be picking up the teleport on Orianna, they're really going to try to put map pressure all around, everywhere in every lane uh, as soon as they hit 6. Because really this power spike that they have, you're coming out of 6 with uh, the Sona Crescendo, the bullet time from Misfortune, the Unstoppable Force uh, from Malphite, as well as the ultimate coming out from Orianna. They, they just have so much coming out all at level 6. That's when you have to see immediate teleports coming out. So hopefully that they can shake off some of the jitters from the last game and uh, really push forward some of this. Yeah, that's something that um, something that we pointed out that we really wanted to see from Black is we wanted to see that Wombo combo. We thought that they had really good synergy, but they just didn't have the best champs to synergize with, obviously, last game. This game, they have the champs there. They have the, the potential for that gigantic Wombo combo, but on the other side, Titans go for a bit more of a, a split push comp, especially with... The Fiora. The Fiora is unmatchable as far as split push. She can 1v1 anybody. She's Her kit is literally designed to duel anybody. Uh, so she's a tough champion to 1v1. And uh, I think that's why they're taking the double TP. The double TP is a good idea in this case. But they have to watch the, the, the split push in this game. Because 5v5 fights, I don't think Titans are going to take too many of them. They don't have a terrible 5v5 fight, but you really don't want to face that Wombo combo from, uh, from Black. That's an extremely strong Wombo combo. Yeah, that's very true. But when you're looking at, we're talking about power spikes here. So obviously the level 6 coming out for Black, but really for the Titans, almost like a level 2, level 3 is going to be very strong for them. Uh, with Lee Sin going to be coming into one of these lanes, he's going to definitely be able to put pressure there on either mid or bot lane. Uh, not so much a ton of pressure there coming out of top. I think that's really going to be uh, stalemate moving into mid game, uh, depending on how each hey. player plays. Oh, yeah. But uh, uh, what should we call it? So most people are really going to be looking more towards uh, the bot and mid lane. So I really expect to see a lot of big plays coming out of right there. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to take uh, just a little break here coming into the game. Uh, going to play. A little bit of music for you before we get back. Cause I gotta grab something to drink. But yeah, this next game should should be a pretty good show. Uh, if you guys are just now tuning in, this is Imperial Black on the blue side against Imperial Titans on the red side, and with Imperial Titans took the previous game, so we'll see if they can. Make something out of this. Hey, wake up. All right. 
I'm sorry. taking ignite as well. Yeah, they're really gonna look for those kills bottom. <coughs> sorry about that. As I said, uh, it's it's a tough matchup for Fresh Lucian if they get behind. They have to start out that lane strong. They have to go into the lane and just start bullying um, the Sona MF because if the M Sona MF get the get the upper hand, push them in. That's just so much poke, so much poke, and you can't allow that. Um, so they either have to get early ganks from Lee Sin or get the upper hand early. The good thing is, is obviously got that classic level two power spike from Lucian. Uh, Thresh Lucian is an extremely good combo. So uh, it, it really swings both ways. We saw last game Toyo Kingu and Lesion started off decent. Uh, but Razen camped that lane so hard that obviously uh, really got that lane ahead and Toho struggled the whole entire game. I think this game, if Toho can kind of keep up and do a lot better, especially as MF, with this Wombo combo, it's going to be extremely important. Oh yeah, definitely. <coughs> so really, uh, right. we, we've talked about a lot of the... Uh... The big players here. It's, can we get a little bit of uh, backstory here on some of the teams? I can see that Titans are already up 2-0 um, on their games. Is that 2-0 points or is that 2-0? They've already won two series. They're 2-0. They've only won one series, though. They, uh, I think they, yeah, they went 2-0 against Tomic. Uh, right now, as far as the standings, it's there's obviously the eight teams. There's the Templars. Templars first, Esports, uh, Legion Crown, kind of all tied for that second place. Um, and then Black lost their first series against esports. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, tomorrow obviously is, is the next set of games. I think Black, going from what they've done in this tournament, definitely have the potential to be one of the front teams. Um, I think Black is a good team. They're a solid team. Um, even the series that they lost, it was against my personal team. Um, it, it was definitely a close series. Uh, went down to three games. We we barely won against them, and I have a lot of respect for that team. They're a really, really uh, good and organized team. Uh, but Titans are just such a strong team. Titans have got uh, the ma the micro play down. If Titans can play well in the macro game, I think Titans have a really good chance at winning this game or winning this tournament. Oh, wow. And we already see the early game aggression <laughs> here coming out of the Titans with that hook landed onto Toru Kingu. Gonna have a really rough time here in this game with uh, flashes already burned there on them. And I don't believe, it looks like we only had the flash burned from Full Metal Echo. So, yeah, this this game already is shaping up to be not the best here for Black. But then again, like we said, they really only have to uh, hold out here on the first 8 to 10 minutes in this game. Uh, as soon as they can get to that point when everybody hits level 6, uh, then they can really start uh, pushing their lead ahead. Yeah, yeah, I really think if they can kind of come out of lanes, you know, only down by 500 gold, 1k gold, then that's a victory in their in their hands, you know. They've got to look at it that way. They've got to kind of just have Bundle help out the lanes, assist the lanes. Don't try anything too flashy, and if they do that, I really think that uh, Black can pull out this game. Definitely. So something we talked about uh, in the last game was the wave management that came out from Toru Kingu. And I think that's going to be something that's going to be even tougher for them this game with the poke that comes through for Lazy Asian. When he's trying to throw off um, his cues for a little bit of poke damage, that's also going to somewhat push the wave as well. So that's going to be something really to watch out for is, is where the wave is going to be sitting there for bot lane. Because each, each, really, excuse me, each team is going to be looking to put the pressure down here. So really, wave management is going to be very crucial in this game. Yeah, I'm excited to see uh, what Sona will max here. Whether she's going to go for the max on the Q or the max on the W. We see Lee Sin in the tri-bush, kind of looking for a little bit of an early gank. Uh, decides not to. Goes off to the Scuttle Crab. Boy, no, is he coming back? No, he's just walking. He's just messing with me at this point. <laughs> And quick fact as well, if uh, Titans do win this series 2-0, they will be the only team in the tournament uh, to go 4-0 in the entire series. Even Templars, who are in first place went, right now, went 4-1. So that will be a big accomplishment for them. Definitely. We already saw a few minutes ago uh, that uh, Clannon was able to put quite a bit of damage down on Giorgio. He 
burns off two of his corrupting potion uh, charges. So already he's having somewhat of a difficult time up there. They're keeping the CS even, so still able to do quite a bit. And there we have Detritus is perfectly playing this. He's going in as soon as uh, Lazy Asian goes in for the poke damage and goes off to return it. Because in this lane, if you take a lot of the damage from Sona's Qs and don't return any back, it's going to be very difficult to keep up. Oh, There's the Ignite on both sides and the Flash heal away from Lucian. <clears throat> There's just one summoner advantage there for MF. Obviously, the Sona sustain gives them the lead. It's really risky right now for the Lucian to be staying in lane. Yeah, and he goes back. That's a good decision. You don't want to stay in lane. One Sona Flash Q and you're dead. I was really surprised that uh, Toru was able to hold on to his heal there. He de definitely got pretty low, so that was... Good play by him in order to hold on to that to the very last second and keep that summoner spell advantage. He really trusts his, uh, trusts his health bar there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Lannan and uh, Giorgio. Giorgio actually having a little bit of a CS lead, obviously, because the wave's pushing. And the flash burned there, Giorgio. <laughs> a little That's bit of the, not, not the, the BM back. A little bit of the BM, yeah. Obviously, you don't want to burn your flash that early as Malphite. He's really going to have to watch his lane. Uh, uh, Lee Sin can easily make a return gank, and setting up a gank with Fiora is pretty easy. So you want to be careful of your positioning, especially as Malphite. Pretty big discrepancy in the bottom lane, though, as well, because of the Lee Sheen had to go back the whole wave there. Fire CS lead for Toro. Oh, I see. So, okay, so I think that uh, Razen said he wasn't BMing. He just, uh, I don't know, I guess it, I couldn't read the whole text, but I think he said that. Good, you got to use Flashing Master with the BM. Yeah, ah. there you go. Okay, Everyone's so you friendly. Go. It's a friendly tournament. <laughs> I don't know, I, I still, I, I think BMs are still somewhat friendly, but here we see Full Metal Echo able to get the Death Sentence down, but he moves out wow, just in time. what a beautiful Lantern, yep. what a beautiful Lantern there. Very well played there for the Titans Beagle's bot lane. He's got to save that pillar though for the Lantern, he's got to predict that Thresh is going to throw back that Lantern and save the pillar to interrupt the Lantern gank, or the Lantern save. Yeah, do you really think we're going to see something like that out of this game though? That's because that's the timing required in order to get... Uh, the Pillar of Filth out just in time for that. It's definitely pretty difficult. It's tough. I've seen it, though. I've seen it. Somebody did it against us in scrims. Oh, oh okay. nice there ward go. there. Good ward there. Obviously, Razin just goes scurrying back to the jungle. It's always the most awkward thing as a jungler when you get caught in lane. You don't know what to do. Or when you miss your Q as Lee Sin. Yeah, right. And just kind of just walk back, you know. <laughs> so as you can see right here, that the CS advantage is pretty much in the uh, in the pocket for Imperial Black there in the bot lane, which is going to uh, definitely be in their favor. That's Most of that is from uh, sending Detritus there back early on. And really, they're just looking for this next level here, in this level 6. And hopefully by that time, we'll have Trundle move down here uh, to put a little bit more pressure. But it looks like Lee Sin might have another idea, especially with this wave being pushed up. Like I said, their wave management has been one of their uh, one of the points they've really struggled with. And here we already see him coming in the lane. Don't have to burn your flash there, yeah. Obviously, you know, Razin's going to try to make these return ganks to see if he can get burn a summoner, and he does, which is good, good gank by Razin. It's definitely, we're seeing kind of the same thing that started to happen last game. Slowly, every single lane but bottom lane is starting to get that CS lead. Uh, already a 200 gold lead just from CS alone. 300, sorry. So... Not too big, but definitely something you want to watch. You want to try to keep up in CS. However, we did say, you know, if you come out of the early game, the win. And what a kill there, Georgie. I don't know what uh, Clannon was thinking there. Kind of going in on Georgie there, full health. Or basically full health. A good kill. Yeah, it was, it was really kind of confusing that he put the grand challenge on there so late. Um, yeah. And good play by Giorgio by kind of faking back there. I mean, he very obviously had that kill, but uh, really the majority of that was was Clannon taking a lot of that trade into minion damage. And earlier on in the game, this that minion damage is going to be really crucial as far as making these plays happen. Oh, and perfect, perfect timing by KRP to go in there. 
well placed Emperor's Divide. Trace. Here we go. He's still running. Bill has got to pull out the fancy footwork here. <laughs> oh, looks can like he do it? Toru moves wow. in just in time. Can we get the pillar? Can they turn it around here, Toro Kingu getting the chase off? And the flash Q by Smeagol gets him. And what? This is such a great start on what we said was supposed to be a better start for Titans. It's actually ended up being a better start for Black. So really, really well done. Yeah, we haven't seen any uh, really big ultimates coming out here except for the one used for uh, Valder's escape. So I really think moving on uh, into this mid game is definitely going to be uh, Imperial Black's game to lose. Yeah, their positioning has been a lot better. And Velder, what a play there to get out. What a great job to use the ult to save the flash for the right time. He didn't try flashing the wall or flashing the leasing kick. He saved it for the proper time and got out. Yeah, there's that blue buff for a reward. So kind of eating my words here, I really thought that the Fiora Malphi matchup would be more so into Fiora's favor, but really Giorgio yeah. playing this very well, um, especially with the uh, when that ground slam comes through, it's just really negating almost all the damage that Fiora can throw out. Really, she's only able to burst through his little uh, his little bit of passive armor, and other than that, he just uses these Undying Grass procs, keeps himself healthy, and puts the damage down on Clannon. Yeah, that's something I'm really glad Georgie got was Undying Grasp. Undying Grasp is so strong, especially against a Fiora. And something that Malphite, why Malphite versus Fiora is such a good matchup is Fiora's E is basically negated just straight from, jo from uh, Malphite's uh, W, just kind of slowing down the attack speed, right? So Malphite is just a rock up there. He, he tends to do well, and he's a pretty safe pick and a pretty high priority pick because he just does well in every lane. I guess you could say he's a rock of the top lane. <laughs> just pulling up my freak puns here. Yeah, jeez. But, uh, yeah, he's good. Here we go. We see, I believe Emperor's Divide is back up on KRP. He's looking to get that position in on him. And Valder, again, almost the Deja same Vu. thing. Yeah, wow. wow. Seeing the same exact thing happen. Although this time we have uh, the Titans bot lane is there. Uh, not there it so is. lucky this time. Torokingu gets hooked, and this is a fight they did not want to take. 4v2, they clean up that one. Yeah, in that game, they really, I, I think Valor was kind of saying, team, team, bot lane, I, I need help. And they just were not able to respond in time. This one, the Titans just really, they had Valor's number, and they moved in at the perfect time. And Detritus and Echo were just coming to pick up the kills, and that's a a three for nothing trade and they're gonna go and pick dragon up after this yeah you really don't want to take those trades if you're gonna be late to the party just don't come at all really because that happens you you just just kind of want to stay in lane at that point you don't want to be caught in the middle of a jungle against a thresh against the lee sin one thing that uh they can be happy about is that thresh got both those kills and for some reason is going frost queens i don't know why uh i understand it is a strong item but it's not usually the best on Thresh, but whatever. He has his reasons, I guess. Well, this is working out for him. He is 2-0-1, so I can't, I can't question him. Really, there's been... Uh, I can't think of the names at the top of my head, but there's been some... I believe it might have been the great POB that plays the Thresh mid lane, um, playing a full AP build. Since the... Uh, his E, I believe, what the, the Flay is stacks off of AP damage. So he yeah. does still get some damage off of that, as well as the passive damage on uh, the empowered auto attacks, and not yep, to mention the, the box. yeah the box as well. So the, yeah. the spooky ghost on top of all that, I could definitely see it being a good uh, item here in order to make plays, because especially on the Titan side, they really only have Raz and Lee as well as KRP diving into the team to make plays. But if they can't really make a pick off to get into the team, this uh, the spooky ghost is really going to be what helps them out in order to get into that position. Yeah, that's uh, playing with fire right there, the Sona. Kind of making it a little bit obvious, yeah. Making it way too obvious that they have jungle support. You can't just walk up in lane like that as a Sona. They, they'll, they'll know. Yeah, he they... probably doesn't know that that's warded. He's still kind of chilling down there. And Razin just loves this mid lane. He's not leaving the mid lane. Though they're going to try to get the great escape again. He pulls the ult, but this time he pulls him a little bit closer. Spams the mastery mode as he gets the kill. <laughs> Yeah, this time it was just the same thing over and over again. And we can tell that that's just really where they want to start putting the pressure 
is uh, getting KRP ahead. We saw last game how he can put out so much damage on this Azir, and already they, they're trying to transition to get him into this mid-game faster. He really needs uh, that Nasher's Tooth in order to get him with really high damage. And then as soon as he gets that Rylize off, that's going to be the CC they need to really get their team into these team fights fast enough and hopefully negate this uh, Wombo that, uh, the, excuse me, that Black has put together. You know, as Vouter, you've got to call for your jungle, you've got to call for your support, or you've got to word yourself and you've got to say, I mean, you know, fool me once, but like this is going to be the third time that he's been ganked the exact same way. You've got to ask for words, but we do have a fight in the bottom line. Yeah, interesting. Detritus there decided to not take the Lantern into the fight, but he's able to move in just in time. Uh, giving the kill away there to Echo on uh, on Toru Kingu. So again, Actually, so these... I love it to get those kills. <laughs> yeah, I believe they we saw last game as well. Because well, last game we had Echo on... Oh, excuse me, no, that was uh, on the black side. We had uh, Bard. Bard with all the kills, yeah. yeah. But again, we just see Razin all over the map on this Lee Sin, just putting forward tons of pressure. He has only missed out on one kill so far in this game, and I believe that was the one kill in uh, the one on bot lane. Uh, I believe it was first, Illusion's first kill. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Like, you've got to, as Black, you've got to say... All right, we know what they're trying to do. They're trying to put pressure in early, kind of just play safe. As we said, if you get out of the lanes, even when you get out of the lanes down by 1K or 2K gold, then that's a victory for you. You just want to get out. You want to get to these team fights. You want to get to these dragon calls and be able to force fights. And right now, Razin being all over the place definitely isn't helping uh, Black's case. And one thing that we've uh, yet to see come out of this game is the teleports here coming out of Giorgio as well as Valder. Um, I have not seen them even teleport back in the lane. So really, they're missing out on a very big summoner spell here that could turn the tide of some of these fights, especially with Razin Lee being down there in the bot lane for so long. And we've had plenty of times, especially with uh, that ward being down there in the, uh, in the lane bush. They've had plenty of opportunities to make teleports in these lanes, but the, this communication just hasn't come through in time for them to really make something happen. However, now that you're saying that, now that they got the top lane, it is going to open up the rooms for the Mal fight. They did get... Uh, Trundle to go up there top. Now they're going to kind of roam down. I think they're going to go for the mid. Try to get that gank on Azir. Yeah, they're pinging I'm it out right sure. now. Yeah, Azir knows. Wow, that damage. Takes him down to half health with just two auto attacks. That's, Pretty impressive uh, already. That's Azir for you. Yep, he's already got his Nash's Tooth finished. So really, quite a bit of the damage is already starting to come out from Azir. Really, one more item is going to hit him in a really, uh, really big spike. But we see he's already got, already a 30 gold, or excuse me, a 30 creep advantage uh, on Valder. So again, this this game is already starting to start to, uh, to shift into the Titan's favor, but in no way is Black out of it yet. Yeah, I think the big matchup for me was the top lane in this game. Seeing if Giorgio, because we did say the last game he did very well, seeing if Giorgio could make a play. Um, but yeah, as you said, no TPs. He hasn't made a play. And as I'm saying that, he does TP in. The bit behind, though, the huge MFO comes out. They get away, and the ignite on picks on, and Giorgio misses the ult. It yeah, it looks like Lucian and kills him there. Yeah, it looked like Giorgio was just um, unstoppable forcing in to try to get off um, his, la his seismic shard in there to try to get off the last little bit of damage on Echo, but he throws down his lantern just in time, and they're just yeah. not able to pick anything up down there except for that one kill on Detritus. Uh, good call on Asian to throw off that ignite in the last minute. Uh, but really, again, this is showing the bot lane here. They're just having a lot of trouble with wave management and knowing when to push up. Uh, they had the wave pushed all the way to their turret. They could have left it there and tried to get off uh, the little bit of damage when they could. With Misfortune's Make It Rain, she's able to put off quite a bit of just a little bit of poke damage while staying fairly safe. They really, as far as using uh, Sona and MF strengths, they've had a tough time really utilizing a lot of that. Therapy gets away with the flash. All beautiful play there by Therapy to get away. He did have to blow his flash, but it's definitely worth it not giving up 300 gold for free. Yeah, and they still, he still ended up taking that mid turret out of it, too. 
Oh wow, what a beautiful death sentence there. Yeah, really just getting caught out there. He's got to watch himself there. Uh, walking into jungle, especially because Lee Sin has kind of dominated that bottom side. Lee Sin, both games, really hasn't gone top. He likes to help out his mid this game. Last game, it was his bottom lane. Uh, he's kind of mixing it up, keeping enemy teams guessing, and, and it's a really good way to jungle. They don't really know where he's going to gank, what he's going to prioritize, and uh, I think it's really helped them out. I mean, he's been involved of six of seven kills so far. So looking at some of these item builds, uh, something interesting that I've noticed recently in the LCS was uh, the integration of the Boots of Swiftness. Uh, let's see if we can get something happen here. Razzin Lee's going in here onto Valder, and there in the mid lane, Valder kind of whiffing uh, his ultimate there, really only hitting Holy KRP, They're able to take him down. And Detritus and Echo take down MF in the bot lane. Uh, but back yeah. to what I was saying about the Boots real fast. Uh, we see that uh, Razzin Lee goes for the Boots of Lucidity on Lee Sin. Kind of a strange pick going for extra cooldown um, when really he has a lot of time or a hard time with energy management. A lot of the energy champs uh, end up not going for Lucidity uh, just for that specific reason. And on champions like, uh, let's say, Malphite or even on uh, this Fiora, we definitely could have seen a Boots of Swiftness come out, but both of them decide to go for more offensive and defensive uh, Boots, uh, respectively. Yeah, even for Sona, only boots, boots of Swiftness are much better. Yeah, def I would definitely Sona agree so. Itself. Yeah, and, and right now, like, Black is, is kind of getting lazy. In the bottom lane, you see MF by herself. There's no reason to be by yourself, especially against a Thresh. And you've got to have backup. If your turret's not there, they've got to freeze the wave. Um, it, Black's got to try to group up here. They've got to try to push out their waves and then just group up and go all mid. Because at this point, uh, it's getting out of control for Black. Uh, Titans are getting a massive lead. They already have a 3k, sorry, 4k gold lead. You don't want to let them extend that too high. Yeah, and we already see that with a couple items completed on Giorgio, he can definitely make a really big difference in these team fights. We really just have to have him in there in order to make something happen. But he's still going to go up here to match uh, Clannon on Fiora. He's just really putting the pressure down, and he's just kind of pigeonholing himself up there until his teleporter comes back up. Yeah, that dragon really Black needed to fight for. Black needs to fight for these neutral objectives where it is. A tight corner where they can get the Malphite and the Oriana in there. Both Malphite needs to not worry about his turret so much and be with the team right now. I think their priorities are a little bit off. They got to get Malphite coming with the team. They are now. Maybe they can set up a play here. You do have Malphite coming in just in time. A beautiful ultimate hitting both of them in there. And the, uh, Sona Crescendo right on top of it. It would have completely melt uh, Holy KRP and Echo. They and just that is a that is exactly what's going to get them back in this game. What a beautiful play from Georgie. They didn't even have to use the MF fault. It just shows you the complete power that they have, and they could possibly get two turrets off of this. Uh, they got a wave pretty far back there, and with the wave clear, oh, well, maybe. You're, I think you might be right. They might move in here, but it looks like Razin has got a different idea on his hands, and there, there's that MF fault. Save for the end. The bullet time takes down Razin Lee. Uh, with Smeagol there finishing off and grabbing that last kill. And we quickly are eating our words here. Black is swinging back into favor. And uh, that's completely evened out the gold lead that they had. Yeah, yeah. As we just said, Malphite needs to come down. He needs to stop worrying about the top lane. He needs to set up plays. We said Giorgio is going to be the, the main guy in this game as the Malphite to set up the plays. And that is a classic example of what they need to do. If they keep doing that, Black or Titan, sorry, really, really can't answer for their team fight. However, if Black doesn't group up, if Black gets caught out all over the place, they've got a Thresh, they've got a Lee Sin, they've got an Azir. You gotta stay grouped, you gotta travel as a death bar, just death ball, get those turrets, and just siege the enemy. Because really, Titans don't have an answer for the, for the amount of wombo combo that uh, Black has. Yeah, exactly. And we saw there in that last engage how they're just able to layer it on top of each other with the Sona Crescendo into the Unstoppable Force. They just had no time for anybody to send any sort of, for Azir to not shifting Sands out. He wasn't even able to throw off an Emperor's Divide, and Echo wasn't even in a position to, or, to throw off a Lantern to save either of them. So really, they just have to focus off here, like you said, on having their team comp all set together, 
and really getting that death ball to move forward and having all of this set up. Right now, as as Titans, you're you're gonna look for the picks. You're gonna look for the the fewer plays, uh, split portion. As I'm saying, as I'm saying, picks. The uh, MF gets caught, but so does the fresh. There's no reason to flash over that wall, and uh, yeah, he pays for that one. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, I was responding to somebody in the channel. Um, <laughs> Yeah, as far as right now, really looking at some of the vision going on in the game, uh, we do have uh, Black is able to put forward a pretty defensive lineup. And again, we see the Titans still asserting their uh, their dominance, at least as they see dominance, moving forward their ward line really into uh, Black's side of the jungle, having it mostly in the river as well as uh, on some of the entry points there uh, to uh, in Black's jungle. So really just waiting to see when they come out and trying to get the damage down. It looks like Toru Kingo a little too far ahead. Takes that poke down from KRP, and he's able to finish him off with a Lucian calling. Razzle going back in there, getting the Dragon's Rage back onto Valder, pushing him into the team. And he's just keeping this fight going with the constant resonating strikes going out. Smeagol is trying to keep them back, but he's just not able to. Flashes back in and finishes off the Tritus. Very good there. And this fight just seeming not to end. Oh, and threading a needle there with Razzle Lee. Gets that resonating strike onto Valder. Yeah, Toro Kingu really just way too far up. He's you've got to have Trundle on that front line, uh, and and with the Oriana shields, you can't have Toro on that front line. I understand they want to siege, but uh, you, that's what you get when you try to siege against an Azir who's going to poke you way out. Azir's really fed right now. 316. He's got the Rylance Crystal. He's got the Nasher's Tooth. He's going to be doing a ton of damage right now. You have to kind of just let your tanks tank him out. Either get a get a play on him, get a dive on him, or just don't siege at all uh, if you're MF. You've got to you've got to wait and let your front line take it. If your front line isn't tanking, then you're just going to get absolutely blown up like that. Yeah, exactly. Really the only way uh, that we're going to see Black starting to come back into this game is once Orianna starts hitting her damage spike. So as you can see right now, she's sort of building towards the Zanyas, but with only the Chalice uh, on her belt, there's not a whole lot of damage that she's going to be putting out, even with um, her ultimate here. Um, it's escaping me what the name of that is. Uh, Shockwave, there we go. Uh, so her Shockwave really isn't going to be putting out a very um, impressive amount of damage. So they have to really layer on uh, all of their ultimates in order to make these fights go in their favor. And as we saw in that last one, uh, with Razan Lee, who was just able to keep the fight constantly going, staying in range of all of Black's team. And they're just not, they don't have an answer for that. Yeah, they're, they're going to continue to keep this clan and split push up. Planning really at this point is just a split push bot. He's going to do nothing but split push. Uh, and Black, if I were Black, I'd send the the Malphite to try to deal with her as much as you can because you get Malphite to TP in. When the Malphite has DP, you can get the Malphite to TP in. But right now, we do have a Dragon up and we do have probably an impending fight. They're just pinging around the Dragon Dance, doing the, the classic Dragon Dance. I have accidentally, there it is, O is the button. I had hidden the, uh, the characters for some reason. Must have misclicked something. Uh, and, but yeah, here uh, we go. We have... Black is going to start at the dragon here. Razin gets the resonating strike on Georgie, not on the dragon. Looks like he's going to try to obviously go for the dragon steal. Nope, he doesn't get it in time to get the easy dragon. But the top lane and mid lane are going down. They lose two turrets. For just the dragon itself, I don't think that's worth it. And Smeagol, I don't know whether he knows he's being attacked or not, but <laughs> his back was stopped. A little bit of a sloppy back there, you don't want to get caught. Yeah, he got caught shop in there. That's something that you don't exactly see often here in this elo, kind of. A little bit of a misplay there, a little over, too much overconfidence from Smeagol. Uh, but yeah, like you said, Clannon keep doing his job. He's, he's got this top wave, been pushed all the way into the inhib turret. And KRP, just using that superior sieging power, is able to really take him down. Yeah, that's what we catch Echo here. Echo's kind of going in for the run. The Sona Q, and that's the Flash Alt for Fresh. Let's see what we can get out of this here. I don't think much of anything. They've really, they really put the distance between everybody, 
and yeah. now we They're already we already see Black's team starting to split up, so they really don't have any targets to really go into. They are going for the chase on Raz, and they did trigger the Baron. Really just going to be just, and there we go. They finally get him with the unstoppable force from Georgie. And now with the jungler down, this is the perfect time for them to go in and grab the Baron. Let's see if maybe they can use this extra Baron buff in order to put some more pressure on the map. But we already have Echo and KRP moving in to try to be a little nuisance on this Baron. Yes, it is risky. You don't want to be in a Baron pit against an Azir, but it doesn't help if the Azir gets caught out there. Azir still doing damage, gets away with the flash. The Lucian comes in with the culling, does a ton of damage. KRP comes in and sweeps up another kill there, and Fjord gets the double kill on the side, and is a 4 for 0 there, well 4 for 1 if you include the Lee Sin, and then they turn on the Baron, just yeah, I, I understand the Baron call, it is a call that you want to make because the Lee Sin is down, but against an Azir, you just don't want to be grouped up inside of a, a, a Baron pit against an Azir, it's just way too much damage for them, and then they just give up the free Baron. So more so onto this is that it is only 29 minutes in the game, and with a lot of the damage items not being built uh, onto Black side, they really had a hard time taking down Baron in an appropriate amount of time without it putting too much damage onto them. The majority of damage that was put out in that fight was once Giorgio as well as Smeagol moved off of the Baron in order to try to zone out the team. We had uh, Toru Kingo as well as Valder in the back took a lot of damage from Baron, and that's how they were able to just get singled out very quickly with KRP as well as the calling coming out from Detritus. Yeah, if I really had to pick an MVP from this series and oh, from last game and this game, it's really been KRP. He's really stepped it up. Win or loss in this game, uh, whether they win or lose, he's just done extremely well. Again, another 4 one, 9 performance, and Tor King, who gets caught out, gets the death sentence into a quick death. And that's the death period. As, uh, Definitely was a death sentence, yeah. <laughs> the MF talking who's he's just had really lazy positioning tonight. I think he's gotta he's gotta watch himself when he's walking around the map on these immobile AD carries. Even on Vayne last game he got caught out quite a couple uh, of times and, and it's really made it hard for Black to kind of have any chance of coming back in this game when you keep getting picked off against the Thresh or against the Sin. So going off that point, so do you think that this is really a, is it a champion matchup or is it just the mechanics matchup that's really uh, giving Black so much trouble here? Honestly, I think it's a communication error as well as kind of just a little bit of a laziness. A champion value, pick for pick, Black shouldn't be losing this game. Uh, I really think that Black, you know, they did it once. We saw their Wombo combo when they have it all together. It's an extremely strong combination. But now, even if they get the Wombo combo together, I don't see them even being able to win because they are 11k gold down. It, it really comes down to more of a mechanical thing than it does a champion thing, in my opinion. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. And we still see Clannon down here constantly putting the pressure down in bot lane. And as you can see, with the CS differential, is now gotten to a massive point. 100 CS gold lead um, on KRP as well as Clan in the top lane. Uh, they're just able to put out so much more damage. The uh, death cap able finish now from KRP. Whereas uh, we have Valor has only finished the Zanya's Hourglass. So with three damage items going off from KRP and only one damage down from Valor, they really... The only thing that they have to do here for team fights is later on that CC from the ultimates. So they really have to group up here. And sending two down bot to try to match this clan in is going to make them lose this top lane turret. Yeah. You know, something that is good about Noriana ult is that she can turn around a game, especially with the Malphite. They do have that ball delivery system. If they get a perfect ult, I could see them coming back in this game. The base hasn't been cracked yet. Uh, however, if it does get cracked, it's going to be extremely hard for uh, Black to have a chance in this game. Yeah, definitely. We can see just... A little bit of map pressure being put down every time. The calling was burned uh, from Detritus just a second ago. It burned off a lot of HP uh, from Toru Kingo as well as Lazy Asian. So they're just constantly keeping the pressure up here uh, and really trying to transition this into uh, some looks like some more neutral objectives right now. I do got to give it to Black though. They are doing a really good job at defending uh, something that. Oh, and Georgie gets hooked. Obviously, they're not going to go in that. But yeah, something that. The Titans do lack this game 
is their their siege besides KRP. They don't have the same siege that they do that they did last game. Uh, they have a decent amount of siege, but Black is doing a really good job of defending it. Obviously, you don't want to try sieging too much against a Malphite because you know Malphite alt on top of Oyana alt. You don't want to throw it anyway. Yeah, and despite them being 12k gold down, I really don't see this game being 100% over yet. There is a small chance that Black can come back in this game. They've just got to really play slow. They've got to farm up. They've got to get items uh, with whatever farm they can get. Obviously, because the jungle's being snuffed out. And uh, they got to be careful. they got to look for the perfect opportunity to get those perfect ults. The good thing is with the Wombo Combo team is it is one of the factors is that at any point in time you can basically come back in the game get everything down perfectly. So, and like you said, with that grouping up and really getting the CS up, but really with the CS differential coming out right here, um, we'll take a look at some of the, the gold right now. Uh, a 5k gold lead uh, from KRP being over Valor in the mid lane. Pretty substantial. That's, that says Death Cap as well as um, another mid range item. Uh, he's already built. See for that, it's probably a piece of a void staff. He's up on K on Valder, pretty substantial as well as 4K coming out uh, from Clannon on top of uh, Giorgio. All of these gold leads are almost instant. It's a whole huge item on each person. So the amount of CS that they have to make up right now is really substantial. They just have to focus on a well placed team fight to really bring this back ahead and pushing this mid lane already up all the way up I don't believe is going to be their best best move here and as you can see they're already trying to disengage and move out the massive flash with the MFO basically does nothing and that will probably be game after that the MF and the Sona get caught out uh, Malphite has to blow his flash and his ult defensively just from purely from KRP doing damage it's just so much damage they've got the void staff the death cap and the Nash's tooth it's just it's too much to deal with, and at this point, Clannon also split pushing bottom. He's going to be able to solo Smeagol under the turret. Oh, no, he won't. He won't. But they're going to try tanking this turret and cracking the base. Full Metal Echo getting pretty low there. <coughs> KRP with some fancy footwork. They get the turret. They're going to probably get the inhib now as well. Yeah, and this constant pressure being put down here in bot lane. They're going to try to send... They start to send Giorgio down there too. Kind of uh, interesting call. And they could have sent everybody through in mid lane, especially with them being so low. Maybe got a little bit of a wombo out, but oh, the unstoppable force is being down on Giorgio. We saw in that last disengage that really a lot of the missed positioning there from Giorgio, they just didn't have everybody together in order for him to get an offensive unstoppable force put off in order to make some damage happen. Even on the defensive one, with that hit onto Razen Lee, if they could have had the Orianna Shockwave on top of it, it might have been able to make enough damage down in order to stop him from uh, Dragon Rage, uh, Toru Kingu, back into the team. But they just don't have the communication or coordination to really make some of these engages happen. And again, we just have another game with a slow bleed out from Imperial Black. Yeah, looking forward onto the next couple games, I think Imperial Black has to take what they can from this games, from these games and say that they did have some strengths within the games. There's a couple coordinated team fights, but all together, they really just got to work on getting caught out. There's so many times in both series and both games, oh sorry, in both games and both in the series that they just got caught out multiple times. Whether it was Lazy Asian, whether it was Turo, uh, whether it was uh, Smeagol, they were just getting caught out. You've got to watch your positioning. Uh, and if they can watch their positioning and they can have a little bit of better communication, I think they have a better chance at winning in the future. Definitely. It looks like we have a little bit of a delayed... Oh, it came in just at the right time, actually. Excuse me. Lazy Asian with the crescendo came at the perfect time in order to CC to try to take out the kill. But again, we can see with the amount of damage being put out from KRP, he's just able to take out both of those really big champs. And that's pretty much the main source of the Wombo from the team already taken out. So Clannon is going to have a good time here taking down this bot lane turret. Clannon just completely ignores Smeagol. Go in on... Oh, sorry, yeah. Go in on uh, Trundle. He's going to try to run for his life, but doesn't get away. Yeah, and again, he's able to but, make just enough as a distraction for the Titans to move up there and grab the Baron buff on top of this. Yep, they do get the free Baron. 16, 17k gold lead right now. Pretty insurmountable. I mean, they'd have to have pretty perfect play to come back into this game at this point. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, and looking more to your... So, so one of the matchups that we didn't actually uh, look at, the gold differential, is in the bot lane. So we actually have a pretty even CS on both of these guys. So really only the um, the neutral gold is the main thing that's making the difference. And that's only 2k. So Misfortune really not that far behind you. That's why we saw that last bullet time was able to completely take out, uh, I believe, Detritus right there. Especially the damage that's coming out from uh, from Lazy Asian. We can see that he did decide to build a Lich Bane there. Kind of an uh, interesting call to build such an offensive item when really they need uh, some more defense in order to set up these Wombo combos. But as we can see, it actually worked out right there. I'm able to grab one kill at least um, out of that last engage. Yeah, I will give credit where credit is due to all. did a lot better job at keeping up in CS this game as that he did last game. Obviously, last game, he is down pretty substantially in CS this game, kind of keeping up um, on par. And, and the bottom lane altogether didn't do that bad. Uh, it was more of a Thresh ADC bottom lane getting those early kills. But, uh, yeah, I think this game really stemmed from that middle lane. Obviously, Razen ganking over and over and over against the Velder. It kind of snowballed their early game, and when Black had a tiny bit of a lead, they had that 2k lead, they didn't protect it well enough, and uh, you can't, you have to protect it against Lee Sin. Lee Sin's going to completely take advantage of your positional mistakes, and he did. Yeah, definitely, I would, I would agree with that. Um, and as you can say, like, with that advantage that was built up in the mid lane, it, it coming to 120 CS differential. KRP is still putting up so much damage, but we do have Giorgio going in. They get the Wombo off finally, and they're able to completely zero out Detritus. The Crescendo hits only KRP, so a lot of the damage taken out, but Smeagol trying to get through that Emperor's Divide, but he just can't. All that damage completely negated, and they're just able to completely mop up everybody. KRP putting forward so much damage, and there's a Surrender Vote coming in it through. They just know there's nothing they can do. Even with a full yeah. Wombo combo, they just weren't able to get Titans in a good enough position in order to take out enough of them. Yeah, it was a really good job uh, in the end to get the Wombo combo down, but it was too late. Uh, obviously, when you're, when you're down by about 16 or 17k gold, it's really hard to get a proper Wombo combo down. But ultimately, in this series, Titans just had their number. Titans did a really, really good job at um, playing this whole entire game out methodically they played it really really well they took their lead from the early game they took it into the mid game into the late game and didn't even lose it against a team that was uh, a wombo combo team and i must say like clannon despite him only going 2-2-1 he you'd think you'd look at his score and think you know that that's not a very good score uh, but he applied so much pressure in the top line with the split push with the constant uh, pressure around the map he really, really did well. I would give, obviously, KRP the MVP in this series, but Clannon did an extremely good job with the Mundo. He did a good job with the Fiora um, and, and really enabled uh, Black to try to make a decision. Do we go all mid or do we deal with Clannon? And, and Clannon did exactly what he was supposed to do on that Fiora, so give him credit for that, for sure. So definitely, um, KRP definitely put forward a lot of damage. If we're going to talk about MVP status, I would definitely put it more towards Full Metal Echo's favor. Um, you get any carry main, I can definitely appreciate um, a lot of the good positioning as well as some of the um, some of the death sentences and the flays that were put out by Echo. He just was in the right place at the right time, both games. He was able to really uh, keep a lot of the enemies into damage, uh, a lot of the members of Black into the damage of the Titans. Um, I believe in the first game he pulled out the... What, what was he playing in the first game? My memories. I got an it old man memory. It was the Morgana. Morgana, there we go. No, no, no. Morgana was... Was it Morgana? Yeah, yeah, he was the Morgana, was he not? Yeah, no. yeah he definitely was. Are you sure? It was the Morgana, I swear. Twitch chat, help me out here. Uh, I have the last game pulled up already. And you're right, he was Morgana. Sorry. So anyway, <laughs> Morgana. So in, even in that last game, he was able to throw out the bindings and all that stuff. So I feel like, he, and with him having a, let's see, it was 18-2 and two, uh, KDA. So I, I feel like really, he did a really great job both of these games, um, setting up a lot of the damage. Yeah, yeah, he did really well. Uh, obviously, all these votes go towards the, um, the end of the C or the end of the weekly MVP. 
uh, that's it really for us, guys. Something that I do want to say is that we will be on again tomorrow night. What is the game tomorrow night, Bloof? Uh, uh, so tomorrow night is Crown. 8.30. Yep, and it is Crown versus... Uh, somebody. Hold on a second. Uh, I'm trying to find it as well. Oh, there we go. Crown versus Templars. The Templars, there we go. Yep, I've already seen the Templars once on the Rift, so definitely should be a pretty good matchup. Uh, I think that it's going to be a little bit more even than tonight. Um, what do you think about tomorrow's game? Yeah, I don't know. I, I really think uh, Crown and Templars. Templars, uh, I predicted personally to come first in this tournament, um, but Crown were a really good team as well. Um, they're more of a newer team than Templars, but they've got a really, really, really good coach. They've got a good team. They're a great synergy. They're one of the best synergized teams I've played against personally. They do well in scrims. Um, I think it's for them, it's going to be uh, piecing it together. And, and in game, just being able to kind of uh, figure out kind of how to deal with wave management and whatnot. But besides that, honestly, they, they synergize very well. And they're a great group of guys, and they, they all like each other. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think Crown is, is a team that is definitely going to look out for. But Templars, a very, very, very strong team. They do have a player... Um, that's extremely good at at least in skill drizzle. Then they have a really good. They have the MVP of last week, Templars. Uh, oh, sorry, Bobblat, Bob, Bobblat, uh, who won weekly MVP last week. Uh, so they ha they are first place as far as the end of the week. They did very well. Um, obviously going four and one with the five points. However, uh, the standings updated. Obviously, the only team to go four zero this week, uh, Titans. So congratulations, Titans, to go four and zero. Uh, over the entire week, and uh, yeah. Besides that, I think that's that that's a round, about rounds it up. Yeah, definitely. We had a, a great round of games tonight, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to cast tomorrow's games. All right. If uh, for more information, if anybody's watching and wants more information, you can check out our Reddit um, or our. I think we're, I don't know if our Reddit is linked on here. I'm pretty sure it is, but if it's not linked on our Twitch channel it will be it's reddit uh, then it's slash r i e sports you can also check us out at imperial or uh add either of us on league uh i am i e swifter and this is blue and he'll be casting tomorrow night as well yeah thanks a lot guys look forward to seeing you tomorrow and uh everybody have a good night